Hello, everybody. We're hoping you're having a nice Saturday. Welcome to the Dinger. <laughs> My name is Ernie Gonzalez, alongside Richie Zajic and uh, Darga Jolo. As as we know, we're in that latter half of that winter to spring transition for SJSU sports. Uh, basketball is uh, coming to an end while spring while the spring sports are taking off. But let's let's keep it on basketball. The uh, San Jose State women's basketball team has seen the highest highs and some low lows this season. Right, five game win streaks here and there, uh, five game losing streaks here and there, but a boatload of nail biters. Uh, Richie, we'll start with you. Uh, well, they entered the, the, the tournament as a number four seed, right? So they get a bye, they get to play Monday. But does all those nail biters, can all, can all those nail biters help this team? I definitely do think that all those nail biters will certainly help this team. I mean, it builds character, you know, facing adversity like that. And it's not like they haven't been in these games. It's, you know, obviously, like you said, nail biters, eight single digit losses out of their 11. But I think the main edge for this team, they don't really need any extra motivation. I think they've been proving people wrong this whole year, like me, making people look like clowns. I'll admit it, I'm looking like a clown, but this team is the real deal. I don't think they need these nail biters. I think they, they got confidence going to the tournament for sure. Yeah, I forgot to bring you some makeup before, before coming here. Uh, I think um, a big theme this season is coming, uh, digging themselves out of big deficits. Um, multiple games a season where, you know, the, the offense struggles and they have to climb back, especially I mean, the most recent example being the recent game at UNLV. Yeah. Only score, I think, eight points in the first quarter. And then they come back and they just demolish the Rebels in the second half and cruise to a win. That's been a common theme this season. The thing is, can they, can they get away with that um, in the tournament? Because, you know, they're going to be facing guys that are, they're going to be facing teams like Fresno State, you know, Boise State. You know, the former of those two, uh, two very close losses to which, could be, could have went either way for the Spartans. Uh, so I think um, just staying away from those large deficits that they've been able to overcome is going to be a key for progressing in this tournament. Definitely, and, and, and playing to their pace, right? So yeah, a lot of good stuff to look forward to for the woman, uh, the women's basketball team here next week. Uh, on to the men, John Prelo squad. Let's let's just play hypothetical. So they lose to UNLV today. That will make it a seven and twenty-three season for the Spartans. That's 3-15 and 15 for them in league play. Did we see any improvements from last year? Jar, take it away. Um, technically, yes, because there's, there was more wins in the column this season. Uh, but that, that, a lot of it is just a function of the fact that last season was even worse than this season. So um, there's definitely points in the season where you could have looked at this team and been like, oh, they, they look promising, you know, they're very close loss against uh, San Diego State, you know, season opening win against Hofstra, you know, uh, starting off the season three and two. Those all were, uh, were bright spots in the season. And I think um, at least Prilo has some, uh, Prilo and his guys have something to hang their head on or to hang their hat on for this, uh, this season, even though it hasn't gone the way they would have liked to have seen it go. Thank you. You know, I really want to say yes. I want, I'm tempted to say yes, but I'm just going to have to go with no. I mean, it's the same old story year after year. I mean, Seneca, yeah, he's improved, but it's not a one-person game. It's basketball. Five people got to, you know, produce at the same time, and this team needs to be able to win in the Mountain West. I mean, that's their conference. They got to be able to get dubs. They can't. They haven't won on the road in the Mountain West in years, so, I mean, I need to see some consistency. I, I, they could even go out and beat a team like Duke one time, but if they're not winning or if they're not in basketball games, they're constantly getting blown out, it's hard to say that this team's improved. Yeah. Hey, so we got a solution for the recent uh, men's basketball struggles, and it's just simply wiping away the, the, the past. Check this out. Uh, head coach John Prelo posted this on Twitter on Valentine's Day. It's a video of him squeegeeing. Uh, the travel bus from the windshield. Apparently, the driver of the bus couldn't reach those those tough, tough spots, if you will. So, Prelo played hero and gave the chauffeur a hand. The video has since received almost 900 likes and over a dozen comments. Uh, gentlemen, thoughts on Coach Pre wiping wiping that windshield? I mean, hey, he's got some good form on that squeegeeing, but. It seems like you have to do a little bit more work. I mean, it seems like this this team is what really needs some cleaning up, not just that bus. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's some nice squeegeeing. I'll give it to him. Yeah, Jar. Hey, you know what? I commend Coach Prelo for the for the initiative and in trying to help out. You know, a chauffeur like that. But um, and being a critique of the squeegee job that he did, <laughs> um, it, it was a good start. You know. He, uh, he got the, the windshield nice and wet, but when he flipped over the squeegee to the rubber side, 
he only went, uh, I think it was two passes, only like a quarter of the windshield was dried off before he, he dropped the, the squeegee went, uh, and left the, the, the frame of the camera. So that just speaks to, you know, being able to finish the job that you started. Yeah. And you can kind of make the parallels of, you know, you came here to start uh, there it a is. job. There it is again. <laughs> You know, very analytical of you, Jara. Yeah, uh, you know, Pilo, <laughs> he's t he said uh, many times his numbers guy. Yeah. You can't really quantify squeegee in a window, mm -hmm. but you know, he also said he's a results guy, and the results, you know, uh, have left stuff to be desired. Right, let's let's give Coach a break. All right, uh, on to the diamond. Uh, so yes, it's the spring semester, and that means baseball and softball are in full swing, right? Uh, let's let's begin with softball. So after losing two run, one-run games to start their season. The Spartans forgot what losing tastes like. Uh, Coach Peter Turner, who won his 400th career game with the program during the team's ongoing winning streak, has, uh, has a team flying high. I spoke to Turner before the season, and he made a public promise. Let's take a listen. My goals are the same that they've been um, since we became successful, is win the championship, go to the NCAAs. And I thought we, I, I believe we were snubbed last year. Our RPI is 41 in the nation out of 300 plus schools, and we don't get selected with a great record. And you take Boise State, who finished 12 and 12 in the league in front of us, and we swept them. I can't do the math on that, and I don't care how you try to justify it. You can't, can't sell me on it. So it's kind of driving us this year that we were snubbed, and I like it. Been here for a long time, the stability. And in, a, in a world where coaches split on kids left and right, I mean, I'm, I'm planning on ending my career here. Shusetsky's 72 years old, and he's still coaching Duke. I'm not even close to his age, so I haven't put a time frame on it. I will quit coaching when I quit having a passion to do it. Family first, school second, softball's a distant third. That's never changed. I'm proud of my athletes because of their academic success. I have a bunch of nurses, science majors, business majors, uh, you know, there's no pottery classes in this group, and I'm real proud of that. We won't finish anywhere but in the top 64 and go to the NCAA. And you shunned us last year, and you selected us as number 65 out of 64 that we're going. We'll we'll make sure we prove it to you that we'll leave no doubt. It's a guarantee. Hey, as everybody stays healthy and plays to their ability, yep. And I'll stand behind it. This is a very talented team, and. If we don't do it, then shame on us. Okay, so the Spartans have since won 16 straight. Uh, they're playing Long Beach State as we speak. Guys, not only can uh, how long can this run last, but does SJSU have a shot at something special? You know, I think this run can last as long as, you know, they're playing to the level that obviously they're capable of playing at. I mean, their pitching staff, not only do they have Mountain West reigning pitcher of the year, Janessa Ulegi, they got the freshman phenom one-two punch, Haddad and Sullivan. I mean, Haddad's 52 innings pitched, 61 strikeouts, and only five earned runs. She's 9-1. and one. Sullivan, not too shabby either. 25 innings pitched, 22 strikeouts, and just three earned runs. She's 3-0. and oh. I think as long as their pitchers keep doing what they can do, this team, the sky's the limit. Uh, you mentioned pitching. I'm going to mention hitting, and I'm going to mention some numbers for y'all. Uh, I wish we had a church organ here to back up every single point that I'm about to make. They scored the most runs in the conference, have the highest batting average, the highest slugging percentage, the highest on-base percentage, the most hits, the most doubles, and the least strikeouts. They can hit. Susie Brookshire is slugging 936. Susie Brookshire, she is slugging 936. <laughs> crazy. The next best Mountain West player in that regard is slugging 848. That is crazy. Who knows if she can sustain, you know, those exact numbers, but she is a, she's proven herself to be a force. Yeah, well, good stuff there. Uh, on to baseball. So sticking to that uh, 2020 vision that uh, the Spear has been doing with SJSU Baseball, here are a 20, here's a 20-second uh, hype video that was posted to our Twitter 20 minutes before the season started. Now, while it was a rough start for the 2020 campaign for the Spartans, dropping their first four games to Santa Clara, they flipped the script. The team is on a three-game win streak, which includes a series win over Creighton. What do you guys make of it? 
I mean, three game streak, definitely commendable. I mean, this team seems to be, you know, turning around a little bit, but I'm just, I'm a little, it's a little suspect, their pitching staff. I mean, even in those wins, they've given up four runs, eight runs, and then 10 runs. I mean, it's hard to be in baseball games when you can't hold people under four. I mean, their hitting is, it's, it's been shown in spurts, but I think that pitching staff, it's like the opposite of softball. You need pitching to win baseball games, so yeah, I don't know about it. Char? So yeah, just to add on Richie's point, uh, their offense, uh, in terms of Mountain West, uh, their, their competition really, um, they're in the middle of the pack offensively, but they have an ERA of 7.23, 7.23. That's their ERA. They can't, um, they, that's something they have to clean up if they want to do any thing in this conference. They've allowed 20 more runs than any other Mountain West team so far. That can't continue for the, the rest of the season. All right. Great stuff. Uh, here are the Spears' top five plays of the month of February. We're going to start at the number five spot, and we got our own very, our very own Ryan Carlson on the call. Ryan? Where is it? Looks like Parks, Parks had a shot on him. And now, backhand try in front. They score! Oh, what a beautiful spin around pass from Barron behind the net. And he goes tape to tape with Tona who this one past the glove side of Parks. And the Spartans are back within one. All right, that's number five. Number four, uh, February 20th, softball hosting Canisius. Uh, bottom of the ninth, bases juice in a 2-2 game. Senior Michaela Engelstad at the dish. Smacks one to right, past a diving second baseman. Scores Ashley Machado. Yeah, there it is. She called game. Uh, that senior, she's showing that senior leadership. Uh, softball is flaming hot. Again, they've, they're, they've won 16 straight. They're receiving top 25 votes as of late, so it's uh, very exciting for them. Uh, on to the number three spot. Uh, yeah, the game with the smaller ball. We go to baseball. It, well, when you go to a baseball game, you hear the crowd. They call him Big Poppy. We here we hear call him Hershey Barra, a.k.a. Ruben Barra. This is on Valentine's Day. Uh, do you guys get it? Yeah, the Hershey joke. It was opening night. The Spartans were down 3-1 to one in the eighth before the Jack. He set that ball really, really far. This was his first home run of the season. The redshirt sophomore went on to hit another dinger. Yes, dinger. On February 25th against the Dons, he's due for a big year. Yeah, he really is. Okay, number two. We're going to ding this again. The number two slot. Uh, staying on the diamond. February 23rd, Spartans in a battle with Creighton. Uh, bottom nine, it's an 8-8 eight, eight ball game. Alec Ackerman gets drilled on the shoulder with the bases loaded. A walk-off hit by pitch? It had to feel good for SJSU. First series win of the season, they win it 9-8. to eight. All right, one more ding for that number one spot, the richest play of the month, brought to you by Rich at Rich Dub 11, yes. I shouted you out, Rich. Take a look at this. All right, Zach Chappelle with a pinpoint lob to Washington, who cut back door, caught his man catching Z's. Yes, he caught his man sleeping. Look at that vert. Uh, Ryan, uh, sorry, Washington feeling presidential there. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's uh, the top five plays of the month. That's going to wrap things up from here. Keep it on the spear for all men's and women's basketball coverage throughout the Mountain West tournament as we will uh, have a team of reporters on the ground from Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas. Also, keep your eyes on social media, on our social media feeds, at the Spear SJSU for up-to-the-minute coverage on all SJSU spring sports. You can also visit our website at thespearsjsu.com for more. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.